What you say, ladies and gents, it is your boy back at Sam, and we are back again today on a very, and can I say, a very sunny day. It does not feel like England right now. It's absolutely beautiful today, absolutely stunning walking through the lovely fields, but more importantly, we're here for episode five of Football Rambling. Can you believe it? Five weeks in a row. I'm going to keep this up, I'm going to try and keep this consistent whether international breaks or we stop for the summer. I will keep this up every week and I will keep answering all of your questions because you keep sending in some absolutely brilliant questions and there are some questions I'm going to answer today I still can't decide an answer for and that's annoying me. But yeah, let's get right into it. We've uh, had an international break and um, England have beaten San Marino and Albania. I don't really know what to make of it to be honest. San Marino game, boring. Albania, boring. If anyone made it through the whole 90, fair play. I did it. I'm an absolute trooper. I regretted it instantly. I thought, not going to lie, it was a pretty boring game. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what it is about these international breaks. When I know it's for qualifiers, but we seem to be coming up against absolutely horrendous size. No, no disrespect to San Marino and uh, Albania, unless I've got some... Is it San Marinian? I don't know. And some Albanian fans. I'm sorry, guys, but... It's just a bit boring to watch, isn't it? Because we all know who's going to win. There's not really any upsets. And we just want the Premier League back and the Cups back. It's, for me, it's, it's pretty boring, and I'm sorry. And I, I, I just miss getting the football back. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into the first question. And the first question this week I've got from Josh Horsfield. And Josh Horsfield asked me, will Fulham stay up this season? Will they survive? And I think, to be honest, they will. At the start of the season, I'm going to be honest with you, the three clubs I predicted to go down were West Brom, Newcastle and Fulham. But you know what? I, 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 think, um, I think Fulham are going to stay up. They, they've looked really good in recent weeks and I wasn't convinced with Scott Parker last season. I thought, I, well, I just wasn't sure. I just thought he was all talk and he never really seemed to change his systems up. And at the start of the season, I, I thought he was quite naive when they... They started off this season and they, they, I think they lost to Arsenal, was it 3-0, three, 4-0? Three nil, nil? I remember Aubameyang scored and oh, what a rare thing to see this season. But I remember them and they were trying to pass out from the back and I thought it's very naive to think they can come to the Premier League and just start playing good football and basically passing it into the net. And it's what Norwich did last season and we saw what happened to Norwich. And Fulham, they've started to change the system. They went to three at the back with Anderson and Adi, Adi, Adi Rubayo. Rabio and them two together um, have looked really, really, really good. And my, my standout player for them this season is Ang Anguissa. There you go. I really sure to say his name. I think they bought him for around 18 million from um, Marseille two seasons ago, the first time they were in the in the Premier League, and he didn't really work out for them. But this season he's been absolutely class playing in that central midfield, and he's been help covering the defence. He yeah, doesn't do much going forward, but he breaks up the play and he moves on quite nicely to a lot of their flair players. And surprisingly, Tom Kearney, don't see him much this season. But I, I like Fulham and I think the best part about Fulham is them going forward. Um, Luckman, I don't think I need to say any more. Sorry, a fly just went in my mouth. Oh, Luckman, I think he's an absolutely brilliant player. I think it's four goals and four assists since he joined in January, which is a... It's pretty neat, to be fair, considering he's in a Fulham side, which don't really create and score many goals. And Josh Madger up front, on loan from Bordeaux, the Sunderland Till I Die famous moment that was when he uh, when he uh, screwed over Sunderland. But no, he's been good this season. And I, do, I think Fulham have got enough in them to stay up. They get results. The team I'm really worried about is Newcastle. With Wilson, St Maximum and Almiron out. I do worry for them, and I'm still... Still not convinced by Bruce and the rest of the side, and I don't think they're going to stay up. I don't think they've got enough. Um, yeah, so that's a brilliant question, Josh. Cheers. I do think Fulham will stay up. I don't, that's as simple as that, really. So if we answer our second question sent in by Zayed Kickers, what are you going to do for your 1,000 special? Your 1K special? don't really know. I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. I probably should think about it. Maybe if you send me in some ideas what I could do when I hit 1K subscribers. I don't really know. Really should have thought about that. And I'm not doing what a lot of you keep asking to shave my head or anything. I've got a very long hair under here that I've grown for over a year. And I'm not shaving it off after all this work I've put in. I know I hide it from you all with this hat on, but I'm not putting in all this work just to shave it off. So before you say anything, I'm not shaving my hair off, okay? That's, that's final. Completely final, okay? Done. So yeah, let me know what you think, guys, because I, I can't think of anything at the moment. And the next question is, from Lauren, is football at the pub 
Is it better, sorry, to watch football at the pub or inside stadiums? And I thought about this. I think for club level, 100% uh, has got to be in the stadium. And that's one thing I've really missed in lockdown and I cannot wait to get back to being back in the stadiums, feeling that raw, the atmosphere, the stuff that gets your hairs on the back of your, on the back of your back, on your back, standing up, that feeling when you a team score and everyone jumps up, that roar of the crowd. And being that 12th man, I cannot wait to get back into that. And I'm going to be doing a lot of non-league soon. So fingers crossed, everything stays all right with COVID and with all the vaccines. And we get right back to it because I cannot wait to get across the country, whether that's with my friends or with Lauren or my family. But yeah, we've got some big plans for next year, hopefully. Fingers crossed it all goes well. And um, for me, the, the only time I think perfect at the pub is for international games. Because I do think with the club level going to the pub i don't think it's the same because a lot of the time you've got opposing fans from both sides being in the pub whereas when it's international everyone's in the pub everyone's supporting the same team there's a lot of love and if there's a goal oh my word the limbs in the pubs are amazing everyone's had a drink everyone's happy and it's just very peaceful unless you're losing let's be honest but i just remember back to 2018 world cup everyone at the pub throwing beers in the air and everyone being so happy and it's just amazing. That's what I cannot wait for in the Euros. Hopefully sitting in them beer gardens, a cold, nice lager or a fruity cider, whatever you prefer. And just seeing England do well, hopefully. I can't see us winning it, I'm going to be honest with you. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but that's a question for later on. So Lauren, club level, pub, sorry, club level, stadium, international, definitely at the pub. Um, and the next question from Christian White. Who will win the Europa League? Ah. See, I've had to think about this. There's some good sides still left in the competition. But I think, I just have a sneaky feeling. I can't remember who Christian supports. He has told me this and I don't want to upset him. But I still don't, th I don't think Man United will do it. And the problem is Man United, I think they've, they've created this thing. I know they've got to quite a few semi-finals now. I think three semi-finals under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and not got through. And I think that's going to be a big problem for them. It's a stumbling block. It's a psychological thing. I think, you know, they're going to really struggle again. And I think they're going to get to the semi-final. I think they'll get through this round. But I do think over time, there's some good sides in there. You've got Villarreal, Arsenal, Slavia, pra Slavia Prague this season. They absolutely dominated Leicester. Like, we can't forget. I know a lot of people are passing them by, but I think they're a good side. But I think Arsenal, for some reason, because Arteta... Arteta's got that winning form. You know, I know they've won a few a few cups. I think they've won is it the league or the FA Cup. One of the two. Oh, it's the FA Cup because it's Man City's cup, the uh, League Cup. Let's be honest, isn't it? They won the FA Cup. I know the Community Shield. It's not really a cup, but I, th I think Arsenal will just edge it this year. I think they've got a good squad. I think they've really underperformed, and I think that's the only way really they're going to qualify for Europa at the moment. That's the way it's looking. So they really need to. Uh, sorry, they'd qualify for the Champions League, wouldn't they, if they win the Europa? But I think. They'll win the Europa League. That's my favourite. So a lot of you Arsenal fans will be very happy with that. I think you've got enough enough depth in the squad. When you look at your squad really on paper, you should be way higher. Odegaard, yes, it's been brilliant. And there are many other players, Aubameyang, Lacazette, Emile Smith-Rowe, Saka. But I think really it's those two players, Emile Smith-Rowe and Bakayi Saka. It's the youngsters that have really pulled through this season for Arsenal. And they're very lucky. They've got very good youth system because... They're going to carry them through this competition because they need squad depth because the games will be coming thick and fast after after this international break. So, yeah, I'm going to go for Arsenal there. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. So, next question was sent in by two people, Fen Warner Fen, and A. Chinara 2006. So, I've got two questions from the same people here. Sorry, one question from the same people. You know what I'm saying, I'm, I can't even speak. And it's the most underrated player in the Premier League. And this is quite a tough one. There's quite a few players I, I can really think about that really stand out. The most underrated players. I think Luke Shaw is finally getting the praise. Let's be honest, I, I really like him as a player. And he's finally getting the praise with him being in the England squad. I think one player who... Because the problem is with underrated, it's quite difficult. Because I like to think in the Premier League, because a player who's playing well, everyone seems to really praise them. But there are two players, both English centre-backs, which I think are completely underrated this season. And that's Esri Konsa, the Aston Villa 23-year-old centre-back, costing the club £12 million from Brentford two seasons ago. Sorry, last summer. Would it be last summer? No, the summer before last, he cost £12 million at that time. Last season, he had a bit of a stinker. 
let's be honest, in the Villa side, which leaked goals last season, just about stayed up. But this season, he's been absolutely, he's just so assured at the back. He's fast, he's good on the ball, he's good in the air. And I, I think he's been a lot better than Tyrone Mings this season. And uh, I think Tyrone Mings has been pretty poor, but the, the, the reason why Villa have had 14 clean sheets, the third most in the league, Aston Villa, is not just down to Martinez. I think Esri Concer has a lot to do with it. Esri Concer should be in the England squad. I don't know how he didn't make it. He's a lot better than Conor Cody, especially in a four at the back system. And the other, the other people in um, my most underrated players, I really like the Fulham goalkeeper, Ariola. I think he's been absolutely amazing this season. The second best save percentage in the league. And the second, well, overall on stats, he's the second best keeper in the league behind um, Nick Pope. And one thing I think he's better than Nick Pope for is I think he's way better with his um, feet, Ariola is. And he's been part of a Fulham squad, which, as I said, start of the season, they were pretty poor. But in recent, recent months, they've really picked their form up. And I think he's been an integral part to the team. All this lighting's not helping me. You're only seeing a shadow, but who wants to see my face anyway? And um, another another player is Martinez, the Aston Villa goalkeeper. I think he's been absolutely brilliant. Leno should get a mention. I know he made a mistake. I think he was against the Wolves, but overall this season, I think he's been a good player. But I think the biggest one is Esri Concert, Ariola, and the third mention is the Everton centre back Ben Godfrey. And when we look last season, he was part of a Norwich back four, which leaked goals for fun. And I, I remember watching him and thinking he'd got the. Uh, He'd got moments where I thought, he had moments, sorry, where I thought, wow, what a brilliant play. He's, he's fast, he's strong, he's commanding, he's good in the air, he's a natural leader, and he's very young. But he made, he made too many mistakes, and I thought, I'm not entirely sure, I wasn't convinced. And then um, it came into the summer this uh, summer, and uh, RB Leipzig were interested, and Norwich quoted them 35 million. And I thought, what a joke, they're like, he's not, he's not leaving the club and then from absolutely nowhere Everton just come in and purchase the player and I was a bit I was a bit mm, do they really need him they've got Yerry Mina and Michael Keane but Ben Godfrey under I don't know whether it's Ancelotti or whoever they've really honed in on his skills and he's really he's just he's just gone back to basics and he started off as a, a left back he, but he was playing earlier on in the season when Luca Dean went injured and then he just could, he turned that centre back position into his own because Everton got some good centre backs, you know. They've got Holgate who can play centre back, and Yerry Mina, and Michael Keane, and obviously Godfrey himself. So they've got a lot of good centre backs, and the fact he's made that centre back position his own. And I just really like him. I think he's really one for the future, and I think he should really be England centre back. I think he should start with John Stones. I think the two of them will be perfect together, because being Godfrey, I cannot believe the pace on the player. He's absolutely rapid. I was watching him. And He's beating so many players to the ball with his pace. There's no way you're getting around him. And I think, as a centre-back, that's an absolutely amazing asset to have. Pace in the locker, let alone just pure and utter defensive classness. Classness, what am I saying? But no, I think he's a brilliant player. And yeah, definitely, I'd say him, Ezri Contra are the two main ones for me. There you go. I know it's difficult. I can't pick one. It's too difficult. Maybe you could let me know who you think is the most underrated player this season. There's quite a few. I do think another one who's been quite good this season, actually, is Mateus Pereira for West Brom. Four goals and four assists, especially in a struggling West Brom side where a manager like Allardyce who squeezes any attacking spark out of any team and says, oh, you're a creative midfielder. No, thanks, mate. We're getting the ball long. I think he's been very good considering he's in such a poor side and I do think he'll leave in the summer and join a bigger side. We may... We may see a better player. He, I can see him as like a replacement maybe for Zaha if they ever sell Zaha for Palace, but I can't see him going because they want way too much money. But yeah, there's another one. See, I could just I could basically name them for days because the difficulty is a lot of a lot of good players get the praise they need, so like Basuma, who maybe could have made the list, but then again, I think he's a brilliant player. And I think everyone knows it, being linked with Real Madrid and Bayern Munich in the summer. Maybe Lamptey if he didn't get injured so much, but again, everyone knows he's a good player. Oh, okay, so the next question is from Ross, the most overrated player. Now, I don't, I don't mean to, I, I thought about this one before, and I don't mean to offend one fan base, but this is not intentional. And I realised the, I've got three players on my list and they all played for one team. And this wasn't intentional, I didn't, I don't have anything against this club, I think.
I think what this club have done has turned has turned it round for them because I think they've been absolutely brilliant this season. And there's not much I'd change about the the squad and everything they've done. And I think the transfer business they've done in recent in recent months really has been absolutely tremendous. And recent in the re last year or so, and they've come on leaps and bounds as a squad. So I'd say, oh no, you're going to get annoyed now. Bruno Fernandez. I'm still not sure on Bruno Fernandez. I'm not keen. I still don't think he's good enough. Then who else have we got? Who else did I say? Paul Pogba, no dispute. I still don't think he's really as good as he should be for the price tag he cost. And yeah, I, th I think there's no really discussion. I don't think it's really a discussion, is it, on um, Paul Pogba? I think we all know he's not been good enough. And then the final one, actually there's probably two. Marcus Rashford, I'm not still not keen on him. I don't think he does it consistently enough to be the player that everyone seems to think he is. And then Mason Greenwood, the player's only scored one goal this season. I don't think that's enough to really be considered as a future star for England. I know he's still very young, but one goal isn't enough. One goal isn't... He's not, he's not world-class, is he? Like, if he, comparing to Foden, and Foden's been absolutely crazy good this season. And, uh, OK, so... Ooh, good question from M21 Football Shirts. What Portuguese team are my favourite? See, I don't really have a favourite side from uh, from Portugal, but I have got a couple of sides that I do enjoy and I do try to keep up to date with after I um, went to see them last summer. So last summer I went to see... Who did I go and see? I went to the Lisbon ground. I went to Sporting Club de Portugal Stadium. Did a stadium tour in the day. And then on the evening I went to watch Benfica play. And I've spoken about it before in the football rambling. So those two are my teams, really. But then again, I don't really support them. They're just teams I follow because I've been. And I've been to... It's the same as like with the French leagues. I follow Bordeaux and Lyon and uh, Evian, who are now fourth division French side. And those are the teams I really like to follow. But all of them, again, it's only because I've been to the ground. So I wouldn't really say I support them or anything. I just keep up to date with the club just to see how they're doing just because... I feel a little bit of an alliance to them just after watching them play. And uh, yeah, I think that's a good question. And the next question is from, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and link the two here. This is proper, proper good. This is what they do on podcasts. It's quite professional how they do this. So I'm going to try it. Here we go. So Louis Bent has asked me who my favourite manager is in the Premier League. And so my favourite manager is going to be a bit of an obscure one. He's an English manager, and I think, personally, he's been absolutely brilliant this season. And uh, when you consider, when you look at the squad, and just understand where I'm coming from, I'm going to say, for me, it's got to be Graham Potter. And I know Brighton aren't doing too well, but I do think if Brighton had a good striker, a player who could finish, they'd be way higher in the league, because when you look at that squad, it's not great. And the, cre the chances they create and the football they play is beautiful. It's brilliant to watch and I do really like to see Brighton and I like I like what Graham Potter's done because he took a a Hewton side which were just hard to beat, simple 4-4-2 or 4-5-1 depending on who they're playing. Very defensive. It was Mark Allardyce and Sean Dyche-esque. And he took a side which you wouldn't have said was a, a football playing side really and turned them to an absolute beautiful passing machine and they play out from the back absolutely lovely. Lewis Dunk, absolutely brilliant. Pascal Gross, huge fan. Trossard has picked up quite a few goals in the last few weeks. And I think all of these players' improvement has been down to him. I think as a manager, he's 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 under he's not he's just overlooked as a as a top class manager. And I think what he's done to Brighton and changed the whole philosophy and style of play. I think he de deserves to have that six-year contract he was given. And I think over time Brighton will really reap the rewards and they'll start to see why he's such a good manager. And I think if they get a better striker instead of Neil Mupai, or M Neil Mupai, they'll really start to score more goals. Okay, and then I'm linking it now to Leo Newson's question. And Leo Newson's question is, here we go, you ready for this? He asked me, Graham Potter for England manager. And I'm all for this. I'm, abs I'm back in this. I would love this. I think it'd be absolutely brilliant because I think Graham Potter, he's... He's, he's really he's got a brand of football that I like. And the problem for me with Gareth Southgate, I still don't think he's got a brand of football. You, you think about it, really. Sorry, I've had a problem with the uh, the camera holder today. It's, uh, fall, it's fallen apart. I'm going to have to get a new one, so I'm holding it now. So ignore the shaking. 
but I think Graham Potter's got a real proper style of playing and philosophy. You know what's going to happen, it's either going to be a 3-5-2 or 3-4-1-2 or a 3-4-3, depending on whether he has the ball, and he encourages full backs or wing backs or whatever you want to call them to absolutely bomb on and join the attacks. The three centre backs to stay where they are, but split wide, and then the holding midfielder dropping in, just sitting in front, and then basically the rest of the team go forward and create. And you see with Brighton, really, the amount of chances they create game on game. Could you imagine if he did that with England? And his formation, really, I know, I know everyone says we, we're blessed with uh, full backs. We're not really blessed with defensive full backs. So imagine if Graham Potter was managing England with the three at the back system John Stones, Ben Godfrey, and Enzri Conter. There, three at the back. Two pacey full uh, wingers slash, um, uh, sorry, two pacey wing backs on either side, whoever you want them to be, bombing on forward. And then it would allow a formation to really allow creative attacking players. You could then have the uh, two holding midfielders. You'd probably have, at the moment, Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice as the two holding midfielders. I'm not still not sure on Calvin Phillips. And then that would allow the, the kind of players like Grealish, Foden, those uh, Mason Mount, all of those kind of creative midfielders, Saka, Sterling, Sancho. I wouldn't put Rashford in the mix, but all of those kind of players who really flourish in att as a t in attacking sense, and that would actually give them the chance to attack, because that's, that's what we want, really. We want a manager who will give those kind of players a free pass and just say, go create, go, go do what you need to do, and get us those goals. And I think Graham Potter will actually allow those players, give them that free license to go forward, because under Southgate, I still don't think really they can go forward like they want to. I still think there's a problem. Sorry, over the gate. Oh, that's a big one. I still think Gareth Southgate, it's still too negative. It's quite easy to play against. And I know, like, obviously we beat Albania and we beat San Marino. But in the Albania game, Albania stuck players behind the ball. And we really struggled to break the pass because it's sideways passing, sideways passing. It's keep the ball on the floor, pass across the defence and wait for that gap. Whereas if you look at a Pep style of play, or a Potter style of play. And I do think the two are very similar. It's fast movement of the ball out wide and then a midfielder going alongside the winger or the, the wing back. And they're playing in between the lines. Brings players out of position and creates space. And I think that would be absolutely perfect for an England side. When you just think about it now, can you imagine? Oh, 2022 World Cup, it's coming home. I can see it happening. I'd give it Graham Potter. I'll, yeah, that's a long-winded way to say I'd give it Graham Potter. And the next question, the second, the uh, the final question, sorry, is from what's that? Chris Jones. These are very. It sounds very like a, a very generic name, isn't it, Chris Jones? But yes, Chris Jones has asked me, have I ever met any pro footballers? Funny you ask, Chris. Actually, the car coming right behind me, so I'll let that go before I tell you, Chris. There you go, car gone. And um, yes, so you asked Chris, have I ever met any pro footballers? And yes, I have. I was once a mascot at a West Brom game where I walked out with Peter Odden Wingy. Could have walked out with Lukaku. But for some reason, me as a, a younger lad went out with Odden Wingy because I'm a little idiot. But anyway, I'm not sulking. I'm, I'm over it. It was only 10 years ago. I'm over it. <laughs> but no, I did meet, and this is a very odd story, and I'll tell it you now. So about 10, maybe 12 years ago, I was, in, I was in the queue in Disneyland Paris to go on the log flume. And I was stood with my cousin, we were waiting in the queue, as you do. And all of a sudden, this man comes by and he's skipping all the queue. And I'm thinking, how's he allowed to skip the queue? What's all that about? And I looked and I was probably about maybe eight, maybe nine, I don't know. Around about a time and I was like, I recognised him as he was coming towards us. And he came close and I realised people were starting to take photos. Then it clicked. Do you remember the Chelsea winger and France international, Florent Maluda? Yep. I met him and had a photo of him. I will get it out eventually, one day if I can find it. It's been archived somewhere. But yeah, I had a photo with Florent Maluda waiting in the line to go onto a lock flume. That's a pretty, pretty cool claim to fame, isn't it? I met Florent Maluda. I met a French international in a queue to go on a log flume. 
Very weird, didn't expect it, but no, I met him. And that's a pretty cool thing to be able to say. Not many players can say, not many people can say they met players. But yeah, I think I'm pretty proud of that one. I think Florent Malouda was a good player back in his time, back in that Chelsea team. And when you think back, looking at that Chelsea team, wow. They had some players, didn't they? I'm a bit jealous. But no, overall, guys, just to sum up, just because we're coming up to the end of the video now, I'm worried. I think everyone's getting their hopes up for England. I'm still not convinced. I still don't think Gareth Southgate's the man. Hopefully, he can prove me wrong. And hopefully, you never know, we could do something. But I look at other squads. I look at the Belgium squad. I look at the, the France squad. Even the Italy squad. Even the Spain squad. The German squad. Everyone's got very well-balanced teams. And I just don't know. I'm just trying not to get my hopes up. I've got my hopes up in the, in the summer 2018. It really really hurt when we didn't go through it we didn't get to the final so we try and go in it quite negatively and let's hope gareth southgate can prove me wrong and if not kick him out get graham potter in brilliant manager brilliant style of play i think he'll be the man to bring england home the world cup and the euros but too late to bring him in now but yeah overall guys one of the thing as well i saw claude from AFTV passed away today i think it's a really horrible thing so guys and I'm sorry to hear that. I hope him and his family are okay. And uh, one thing, guys, why don't you just, with your mate, just check on them. Just ask if they're okay. Give friends a hug when you can after COVID. Just drop them a message. See if everyone's okay. Because everyone's suffering. Everyone's struggling in lockdown. I think we just keep checking on each other. Just see how everyone is. And I, like, I have the two okay rule. Or are you sure? So if you ask your friend if they're okay and they go, yeah, I'm fine. You say, are you sure? Or... Are you okay? And you ask again. Just ask twice. Uh, they say, all they can do is just say, yeah, I'm fine. But sometimes you never know, a friend may open up. So just, just check on your friends, you never know. We're coming to the end of COVID, but it's still, we're still not there yet. So just, just check up on everyone, because everyone's struggling, okay guys? I hope everyone's okay, and I hope everyone's staying safe. And I will hopefully see you soon. I've got a big video planned with Lauren this week. If you've watched this far, you get a little sneak peek. Here you go. So I'm gonna be giving Lauren Maybe 100, 150, I can't decide. And I'm going to get her to uh, go buy me some football shirts and see what she surprised me with. Who knows, she may get fakes, she may get some awful ones. But I thought we'd see. It could be an interesting video, kind of like a mystery box style. Because I'm not sure on football mystery box, because I still think they're scams. So I wouldn't advise anyone to ever buy mystery boxes. And I'm just starting to collect football shirts, so hopefully I'll be able to show you some videos of that. But yeah, boys, thanks for watching. Look here, Sam, over and out. See you next week. Bye-bye.